Hello everyone and welcome back to Shree FC. I hope you all are well and good. That's always my first priority. Do hit the like and subscribe. It really goes a long way in helping the channel. We all know we are all sad, depressed because Chelsea yesterday put out one of the symbolic displays and we lost 3-1. It wasn't symbolic but the result was symbolic and it was West Ham 3, Chelsea 1. A disappointing day at the office. London Stadium and Horror Stadium for us to side of Goodison Park. And just didn't work. We lost 3-1. It started with conceding a goal from same old set pieces and then we bounce back with Chukameka but as always again Chelsea's injury curse continues and sadly Chukameka get injured my all wishes with him and he hopefully quickly recovers and after that Antonio in the second half scored before that we missed the penalty via Enzo and then they scored in the end via penalty which was sadly considered by Calcero and they won the game 3-1. But now it's time to discuss 5 things I learned from this game and do let me know in the comments the thing you learned in this match and do let me know about the match and what do you liked about this match and some things you didn't like and that is a concern for Chelsea. Number 1 I want to talk about is Raheem Sterling and in, I was going on watch along as well. At some point I thought he could have done well in end product but his performance was one of the best Sterling has put in Chelsea shirt and if we had a proper striker there in the match Sterling would 100% have an assist. And he was just spectacular, especially in the second half. He was absolutely spectacular. For Raheem Sterling, who's been getting criticism from the preseason, that he's not really giving it for Chelsea, he doesn't give a damn. I've been seeing on my channel his performances might not have been good, but the guy gives everything. And it was good to see Raheem Sterling back to his best. He was so good at the right wing. The guy took on players, took on three or four players, dribbled past them, got in the box, earned the penalty. And only Raheem Sterling was a player capable in a team to win a penalty like that. So it was good to see Sterling back to the player we know, the player we actually signed from Manchester City. And if, if he can play at this level and the young players learn from him and grow, I think we can go in right way and that's good to see Raheem Sterling playing the way he did. So that's the number one thing and that's a positive. Now coming on a bit of negative and that was Robert Sanchez. I've been saying I'm fine with Robert Sanchez and again I backed the board's choice, I backed the manager's choice, I backed the scouting team choice but the performance was again at the level that we expect from Kepa and as I always said I don't see him as a major upgrade on Kepa and that was the same thing. Sweeping keeping was fine, you cannot say it was bad but you cannot say it was world class and then again I believe that goal he should have saved if Kepa was the one again, he it hit his arm and a proper goalkeeper is putting it away. I'm not blaming Sanchez, I believe he's an above average goalkeeper just like Kepa. He's just a bit better than Kepa and as I, I've always been saying on this channel that Robert Sanchez will depend on the goalkeeping coach we've got because Robert Sanchez's best performances came at Brighton under this coach, under Graham Potter. So hopefully he can work a miracle. Otherwise, he's a fine goalkeeper to have but next year we'll have to go and sign top keeper because I think he should be saving that shot. Against Liverpool also he made a sweeping error. So that was the thing that's still, I think, disappointed but I'm still backing him and hopefully he uh, keeps doing well and improves in his performances because uh, we need him for this season because if we want to go in the uh, better positions ahead in the table we need Robert Sanchez to be at his best and I think that goal should be safe and a proper goalkeeper like Alisson, Ederson and even Unana are saving that. Coming on to another thing that is Mudrik and Mudrik still very, looks very raw. I've been saying for a long time that Mediuke and Mudrik are two one of the most raw players. We've got very good youngsters, great talent but very raw. Mediuke is just more ready but still he doesn't have the end product and Mudrik is still very raw. Even when we signed him, I know we signed him for 62 million plus some add-ons which depend on us winning champions in the Premier League which is not happening in anytime soon. But again, Mudrik is a player I always said is a player we need to show calm and patience. That doesn't mean I'm saying he's absolved of any blame, he should not be performing, he should not be putting great performances, no. He's not absolved of any blame. But this season my expectations were always low, it was about developing under Pochettino, getting some GA, 5 GA, 5 SS, 7 GA, 7 SS and hopefully next season will be where we can properly criticize him, constructively criticize him and see where he's at. And right now he's very raw. Now I know volley is a tough thing to hit and many players want to do that but still he's finishing. Sometimes it looks like he goes quicker uh, to the ball rather than being in the position and it looks like he's still a player that relies on the pace but doesn't look at the other attributes which is about taking time on the ball, looking for the right pass. I still believe we are not also using him well. He's a player you have to quickly release but again at the moment he only looks like a player that can dribble and fast but there's nothing more to his game and I think with Pochettin on the training ground hopefully that can be improved and the fans will need to show a lot of patience. Coming on to set pieces now and it's been a problem for Chelsea for a long time. Under Frank Lampard's uh, second season I believe we did improve on set pieces with uh, Anthony uh, was a set piece coach who's now at Bayern but again after that having got everything has turned horror. At least two years back we used to have big bodies like Rudiger, we used to have big bodies like sometimes Chris Henson, we used to have Thiago Silva so we used to have at least some physicality but again and always this is a young team we don't have the physicality and again when Conor Gallagher is marking uh, Edward is going to be a danger and again I think our set pieces are just not good enough. 
I think for us again, I don't know why uh, in the end again that see, I'm not saying go and sign top bodies, go and sign five foot six players, uh, six foot two players. But I think in these situations, leg beat Ubuchu quick can help us. But again, he's very young, should he be starting? So again, I think in set pieces, we need to be careful putting a big man like Desazi, putting big man like Thiago Silva. Colville for me is not a very big man, but Desazi, Thiago Silva, even Nico Jackson, because we used to criticize Kai Havertz, but in the corner case, he used to defend well. And I think when you're playing West Ham, Ward Prowse is a delivery taker, everybody knew what was going to happen and we still weren't ready. And every time West Ham had a set piece, it looked like they'll score a goal. Even against Liverpool, Luis Diaz should have scored. He hit Nico Jackson hand like this and has always been not defending set pieces well. So it's a massive concern that Poch has to solve. Otherwise, every game will do well, but set piece goal will really put all our efforts down the drain. And final thing, guys. I learned from this game is still we need a striker. I think Nico Jackson is a fantastic player and I have been telling on this channel for a long time, be calm, don't put the extra pressure on the kid. I still believe a 10, G8, uh, 10 goals, a 10 assist season is very good and Nico Jackson can be a striker who provides a lot of assists for us. He's a player that can even play as an inside forward, a player that can even play a shadow striker or even sometimes number 10 because this boy is a complete striker. He's very good with the ball, the guy dribbles very well, he takes on players but again, at the moment in terms of finishing and the final output is still very young he's still learning his trade and that is why we still don't have goals in the team if we can go with a profile goal scorer and play jackson behind him till nkuku is back and even ship nkuku to left uh, uh jackson uh, sorry when uh, nkuku comes back jackson at the left and nkuku here or nkuku at the left jackson here and at the right we play sterling and then a profile goal scorer we have we could have goals in this team right now putting all the thing on this young kid and putting the burden on him especially when broha is not fit who for me, if fit, can be a better goal scorer for us, I think it could be a problem. I think hopefully Broha is back and we can play both Broha Jackson together because Jackson is a very good young guy, very good player. But I think right now in terms of goal scoring, we cannot put the extra pressure. These are the five things I learned. Do let me know your five things. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.